to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. Yes. <laughs> How's your Leo season? Oh, it's great. Isn't it so fun All and the out there? Stars are in bloom. Mm. Is that is that what it means? Yeah, I think it's just a crazy it's just a crazy time. I'm feeling off. I'm feeling a little bit weird. Gonna be realsies with you. Uh, I heard it last night at dinner. The waitress said it. What, Leo season? Yeah. Um, Man, I am such, I am, I have my finger on the dick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that how, what is <laughs> yep, it? Yep, the dick pulse. Okay, I have, a, I have my finger on, on the vein. The vein, the of big the, vein of, in, in the, the dick. In the dick pulse, yep. Because, my gosh. Yeah. Right? Uh, so she forgot to put black and chicken on Matt's salad last night. She's like, sure. I'm so sorry. It's just been crazy. You know, it's Leo season. She did not. I died laughing, and uh, somebody else at the table was was a listener of the show, too, and they were like, holy shit, man. What you guys talk about is real. And I was Amen. like, well, I don't want to say that uh, we're ahead of the curve, but uh, we're ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah. you he- Basically, you heard it here first. Yeah. Folks. We're ahead of the, uh, ahead of the dick curve. Yes. Yes. Finger on the vein. Finger on, on the, the vein. Finger on the vein. I got a lot of energy today, James. Do you? Yeah. Fun. Yesterday was crazy. Fun. That was crazy <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> You're uh, what? Book You're signing. Crazy. Yeah. Book signings in uh, Raleigh and uh, in um, uh, Fort Bragg. Man, I was like 600 plus people that came out to, to Fort Bragg. Uh, the bookstore. What was the name of that bookstore? Quail Ridge Bookstore in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, had a great setup for us. And if you're listening to this now and you didn't get a chance to come out, we left 25 signed copies inside the store of Thank You for My Service. Oh, nice. So it's free. If you want to go out and just go up to the, the front desk and they'll give it to you. There's 25 that are so signed Quail, and free. We bought them. Quail Ridge in Raleigh? Yes. Um, and it was... Man, it was packed and crazy all day. Everybody could not have been nicer. And then you guys are doing a live show, right? Uh, yes, in Orlando. And then people can bring their books there, I'm sure. They can. For you to sign. This episode will be, it'll be past it, so oh, they won't be able to hear that. Daisy, sorry. And again, we, we usually typically tape the Monday show on Friday. Oh yeah. Uh, so, which is I'm all I'm all Leo'd out. You're all jumbled it up is inside. Leo season, guys, I and I just I mean, sad boy fall cannot come fast enough. Fast enough. <laughs> I am so over it. I am so over it. I don't want to go to the pool. It was I do not want my kids around all day. It was uh you know, we had we had a really really great time. Um currently we're number 2 in the world on Amazon. Uh thank you for my service. Uh, number three in the world on Audible. Um, the only thing that's crazy. ahead of us is a is a children's book. Yeah, and I guess it's the kind of, I was getting messages of like, if you know, you know. Like, you know, if you have kids of a certain age, you know exactly what Dog Man is. Yeah, so I, I found out yesterday real quick when after the signing was over, the, the woman who owned the bookstore, uh, and again, super nice bookstore, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, she, she comes up to us afterwards and she goes, someone said your book is number two in the world. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, she goes, do you know what number one is? And I was like, yeah, it's uh, Dogman, like the Dogman series. And she goes, oh, well, you'll you're never beat beating, them. Yeah. You're not like, beating what? that. What do you mean? The price. And then I guess it's a thing. I have never heard of it. Yeah. That's the other thing. The price of it is like $5 and 80 cents. No fair. So. Things. That's, no fares. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, we obviously can't compete with that. You know, a hardback book is, you know, 19 bucks but or whatever it is. But we're still positive, no, that we can. I mean, yes, what's the cutoff of here, people buying? So here's the good news is children's books don't count against us in right. our category for the New York Times bestseller sure. list. Uh, we're in the category of nonfiction, obviously. And we've been ahead of everything else for, you know, all three days since this has dropped. Right. So if this continues... 
Um, we have the 50-50 shot at number one. Uh, the cutoff for the, the first week of New York Times bestseller list is, is midnight on Monday. So if you're listening to this, obviously Monday morning, please go out and buy a hardback. And uh, anywhere, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. It's in Walmarts. It's in Costco. It's in, nice. you name it, uh, Quail Ridge. Uh, you know, sure. Anywhere books are sold, books a million. So we got ours. Um, go out and buy a hard back of it and, and that'll is still the count cut off monday night at, so at, at monday. midnight yeah okay yeah. uh and then it starts over so that will be tonight yeah so this by the time people be, are listening to yeah so this your last is shot your last shot to help us get to number one push mm-hmm. Yeesh. now this is where we uh i feel like our listeners and this community really thrives in that last push yeah do you know what I mean? Really taking it over the uh, finish line. They really do it. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was, man, it was madness yesterday. Uh, a lady even handed her three-week-old to Matt. Yeah. I signed a baby yesterday. Did you? I did, yeah. That's real. And we have, we had, uh, Jared took footage of it. Somebody asked me to sign their baby. Oh, Lord. It was about, it was about I would this say, is, one and a half. This is crazy. And I signed his leg. This is getting nuts. Yeah, so I, I signed his leg. Good and the dad you. was like, man, that, I really appreciate it. And I was like, hey. no, thank you for letting me sign your baby's leg. No problem. Leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, man, we couldn't have had a, a better group of people that come, came out yesterday. And uh, we had a blast. It was really fun. Love it. Yeah, and then we went to Max's uh, Speed Shop afterwards. Out there? Yeah. Up oh, in, cool. There's one in uh, Fayetteville. Nice. And uh, they came over and said... The, the owner of the restaurant came over and said, congratulations, you guys. Bought us all Shut shots. Up. Yeah, super nice. A uh, friend of the show, Tiffany Hart, popped out. Nice. Love um, her. Yeah. So she hung for a little bit. Uh, it was me, Jared, uh, Dan, Matt. Um, and it was, it was great, man. We just rolled around all day and, and had a blast. That. The band. Yeah. You had the little, a, little, a little bit of the band back together, huh? Some, uh, some people were drinking White Claws. Ugh. Yeah. In line, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Just get, just wait for that four loco to come out. We were everybody was talking about it yesterday. When It'll is that dropping? Right That's off. gonna be yeah. forget about it. White Claw will be knocked right off the charts. Forget about it, yeah. And there was a a, a wine store that we went to uh, on break that was it's in the same shopping center as that Quail Ridge thing, right? Okay. Uh, the reason I'm, I bring this up, it was the dopest fucking store i've ever been in and they said it's a chain and they said there's like i don't know close to 200 of them around the nation but they had like uh wines from all over the world every beard kombucha liquor anything you could think of and they had a separate room where you could go and drink the wine Mm -hmm. and then they had you could uh the charcuteries Mm -hmm. you could take a charcuterie in there and enjoy it and just hang out in the store and it was fantastic that's awesome yeah um, I was super surprised and I was like, man, when do we get one of these things here? What is it called? Uh, I don't nah, know. Not a prayer. <laughs> not a prayer. Love it so much. It's so awesome. It sounds like a shout out. Oh boy. It sounds like a shout out. I know. I can't remember the name. I can't. I'm, so t- I'm terrible with it. Wine and more something like this. Maybe. Wine yeah. And- yeah. Maybe it Wine was. Wine and things. Yeah, man, something like that. I, right, maybe, right, Maybe I'll right. pull up the store here. Because I do want to give them a shout out. It was so nice. Right. Um, that I want it here in our town. Total Wine, maybe? Hang on. Hang your little... Total Wine and... Mm. Total Wine and more. No. Maybe. I, I'm, I'll look it up. If I find it before you, that would be a miracle. And I did not go. Yeah, and I did not know. That would be an absolute miracle. Anything about it, but um, total wine and more. You think it's? You think that's what it is, huh? Yeah, I saw it on the credit card. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh, you fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Did you guys just think I was like psychic? How I, would I know? I thought the little wine place that you went in Raleigh. For once in your life, you had Googled something correctly what would I have on put? the show. What I don't would I know. Have put? Raleigh wine little store. Wine, little wine store in Raleigh. Yes. Small, small Raleigh. Total wine and Raleigh more. Raleigh is just a little tiny town. Is the jam. Total wine and more is the jam. 
You found it on the credit. Yeah, I thought I thought you were Googling, hard Googling, you know? Wine, wine, Raleigh. Turning over a new leaf, Jabes. Wine and Raleigh would, would have gotten me a lot. I don't think it would. I, I don't think it gets you sip, as much as, as you, you think. No. Uh, and the, so I talked to the owner of that store yesterday because I was like, man, I was super impressed. Right. Right. They had the 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 twenty one year and up kombucha too, the grape, which no one has that. Only know. Los Angeles has that. I don't know that. That's the it's alcoholic a secret, one. Yeah. 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 It's a the sec- black one. Yeah, yeah. 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 No one has the grape. It's a secret thing. They fucking had it, and I was like, hey, man, this is like the greatest store I've ever been in and i was like i want one of these you know um so i ended up chatting with these people for like five minutes on how great their store was so i was cool. really impressed because la we didn't we, we just didn't have anything like that um right. i i would get gift baskets uh for people for agents and lawyers and things like that you know if they did a good job which was rare um but i'd have to go to this wine place that was on uh the one on entourage it was like on pico and you roll in and it's like the shit's dusty man like they're dusting off the bottles and they're kind of bagging it up in a mm. in an orange wrapper and it looks like you know an old Easter one of those Easter baskets that's pre made in the back you know yeah um that's what it felt like and I was like man I wish this existed out there right uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed them thank you and you got us through the day wine and more we had a lot of wine yesterday. Did you? Yeah. How fun! Just because it was a fun little flirty thing. Well, you're in a bookstore. Yeah. So they allow that. Okay. Yeah. So there were, you, you know, you can't roll in with like hard liquor or something like that, but you can have wine, read books, and uh, it was nice. How nice. I know. I know. It was really lovely. What it was a really a lovely really experience. really lovely time for you to a have. A first class experience. Sure. And, uh, and, uh, and then we headed on down to Fort Bragg, and then we were at the exchange there, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of reminds me of like a Walmart inside. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were super nice and accommodating and again there was like 600 plus people so like it, you, you are inside that line was insane there too yeah and, and you are inside walmart so like you're going through i mean people are shopping in there and they're like what the fuck is going on and i remember that from range 15 yes correct same place was it the same one yeah same something place something like it yeah but yeah so uh same exact place we were back there um, and you're like in the middle of a store and people are there just exactly doing what their normal their shopping. Normal and shopping like, and they're like, hey, what's going you? on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh. Uh, but getting on base is they are not accommodating. Yeah, I would hope. I would hope so. No, I not even to Matt or Dan a, or anybody yeah. or Jared. Yeah. Nothing. Like we still had to wait. And when you go in there, it's like a DMV mm-hmm. uh, to get your car registered and everything. And they had yeah. a number and we had to sit in these chairs for like a half hour. We're like, hey, man, we're here for the book signing. And they were like, yep, don't know you. Don't care. Yeah. Um, so we, we my had. My brother to- used to live on base. My dad went to visit in his Winnebago or his truck or something with weed. Uh-huh. And they fl- they, so they that freak was out. the whole fucking thing. Yeah. yeah. He just didn't understand why he couldn't drive up to his kid's house with weed. <laughs> you're like well he lives on base yeah can't it's hard to explain but it's a whole fucking thing it is yeah but i was surprised matt didn't have the 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 the, the, the no, VIP and he wouldn't treatment. have it at the dmv either no right so it's like there's certain things that no matter how big you get right oh yeah 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 there's certain things you just cannot bypass so we had to wait in these chairs and and until our number was called and uh and then Mm -hmm. go up and give our our stuff and yeah i think everybody listening is like yep that's how it works (laughs) well no but 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 they booked you know they booked out the signing for us so you would have figured right think that they would be like hey man yeah there's gonna be somebody at the gate yeah yeah and they were like nope back it on up back it on up right but yeah, yeah it was it was so much fun, and uh, the the response for this book has been phenomenal. Again, number two in the world on Amazon, number three in Audible, and uh, man, people are really coming out and uh, and supporting. So, unbelievably grateful. Really, really cool to see. Uh, uh, and everybody's been on board. Fox and Friends, Sean Hannity, uh, Shapiro aired. Ben Shapiro aired. They did. Yep. Nice. Today, so That's huge. Um, huge. The only person who hasn't was Rogan. Joe Rogan. Well, he's a little busy, but yeah. He's not. 
Like I, I look, I look at his guests, and I don't, I, know. I don't understand why he's not on. Because no, no offense, but Matt's bigger than a lot of the the guests that go on there. Yeah, and I just, I don't get it, man. Well, what happened though? Like, what fell? So you Whose go back and forth with these publicists, yeah. and all I can only say from my experience, right? Like, that, I don't know what what Matt's personally going through, but from my experience, it was Howard Stern. We were dating when, when, or we were married when, when I went through this five, four years ago. Right. No, I'm asking about the Rogan thing. So, did they have a publicist for the publisher? Oh yeah. Okay, and so that's where the the breakdown has come. No. Uh, cause at, at this point we've exhausted every Avenue and all of that stuff. Black rifle coffee was a sponsor of Rogan. If you are a publicist and you don't know that Rogan is the most important, they know. Okay. So, so they know they've tried. We've yeah. all tried and exhausted all and of our options. Just, he's not. And the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this publicly is I've gotten so many messages this week of, cause we've been everywhere at this point. We could possibly go except for Joe Rogan. And I have no words for you, so you can stop sending messages. I don't know. We've all tried. Publicist has tried. Publisher has tried. Matt has tried. Evan. All of us have tried. Mm. I don't understand where it went dark or whatever. And I think Matt even hit him up personally. I and still no. No. And he follows Matt on Instagram. So I don't know, man. Super, super strange. Yeah. So is it the gun thing? Maybe I don't know. No, uh, look, there's no gun on the book or anything. No, no, but he was supposed to be on, right? And those two shootings happened. Maybe I, and I then guess Bernie but, was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking Bernie Sanders about gun control, and it's so, like I who better? Because you look, you've been on some of those episodes with Matt. Who better to talk about gun control than Matt? Right, but I don't know if he knows that. You don't know until you talk to him, right? I guess, man. So you don't know until you but he know. Was on, look, he was on Fighter and the Kid uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Brendan could have told Joe. Um, Brendan went on, I think, Rogan the day after. It, like, he was on there. It was like, hey, man, you could have told Joe, yeah. like, everything's cool. But I don't know. Super strange, man. Interesting. I'm sure it'll come out at some point. Or he'll. Or. Or it'll come. Or you'll do the, it the, later. The book might become number one, and then he'll put him and on. And that would, be, on. that would be awesome, too. So Totally. Uh, but that's, that's why I'm telling the story is again, I've, we've, I've gotten all of your messages and, uh, we've tried, I don't, I don't have an answer at this point. Um, with the Howard Stern thing that happened to me, like I got pushed what five, six times, uh, for mine in, uh, 2015 and then it just went dark and it was like, all right, this isn't going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. doesn't make me any, any less angry about it, but sure. Uh, but whatever. Whatever. Uh, speaking of anger, Jabes, uh, they just dropped that Dancing with the Stars cast. Ooh. And ABC, the, the people who work for ABC are really pissed that Sean Spicer um, was added to the Dancing with the Stars lineup, which I'm sure your mom's not going to be stoked about. Uh, but here's the thing, ABC, because they're saying, you know, whoa, we can't. He, his dishonesty in the White House, we, and now we're giving him a platform and paying him. Because you get paid for going on the show. Right. And you get bumps for, for how far you make it and all that other stuff. Here's the thing. Republicans don't like Sean Spicer either. So I don't know what's your, what your gripe is there. I don't, Sean Spicer is one of those unlikable people that really none of us like. Yeah. So who gives a fuck? Um, I'm surprised he's been able to keep going this long on this little thing he's because he's he wrote a book and mm -hmm. you know he pops up on tv a lot uh fuck he was at the oscars remember making fun of himself at the oscars oh gosh you're right yeah um so i don't know what the look no, nobody really likes spicer I, I don't know what the the outrage is but the the host um tom bergeron right even wrote a a thing on his Twitter today saying how disappointed he was and, you know, he doesn't want any politics to be getting in the show and I mean, in the way of dancing or whatever. And it's like, I don't think he's going to talk about politics in the show. No, they don't get to talk. It's not. Hmm. It's not like that, right? It's not. But they really, I don't think, have had anyone of any political anything. A Bristol Palin's daughter was on. 
Or Bristol Palin was on herself. That's true. Um, but she is not in politics. She's not in politics, but I, look, Sean Spicer's not in politics anymore either. So I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you this list, and a couple names stand out so in this. You're pissed off about Sean Spicer. Ray Lewis is on here, uh, Hall of Famer. All right. Also murdered two people. Um, oh, that's right. So he is on there, and there was no outrage uh, amongst the ABC execs or people who work there over uh, a guy who committed double murder being on the show, but uh, Sean Spicer, sure. Yeah, sure. he beat those charges, right? He did. He did beat those charges, and then went on to the Hall of Fame. Had a, one of the best careers of any linebacker <laughs> in the history of the biz. Vanderbeek. Vanderbeek's on there. Uh, That's an interesting one to me. I like, look, he's... He's good, but don't you feel like Dancing with the Stars is like, I'm done trying to be a real person? I can't tell anymore. Like, the, it's such a blurred line where if you would have asked me this five years ago, I would have said yes. Right. Now, it's like, get your face out there, and then you end up on a bunch of shit, and I, I, I don't know. The ratings are always pretty good for this show. Um People are starting to lobby for it publicly to get on. Uh, the last one was that Hannah Brown, Hannah B from The Bachelorette. She's she was on there. lobbying for a couple of weeks and then she got on there. So right. she's on there keeping that train rolling. Uh, the other one, that, which I'm surprised no, nobody's pissed off about, is Lamar Odom. Why would they be pissed about it? I don't know. Because he OD'd inside a brothel. Almost well. died inside a brothel with prostitutes, but. Yeah, let's put him on Dancing with the Stars, you know? <laughs> well, second it, chances. It was that guy from uh, the Cat House. It was his brothel. What was his his name? He passed oh, away. Oh, shit. Yeah. Baldy, yeah. oldy, baldy. Oldy, baldy, yeah. <laughs> yep. Old, oldy, baldy was in there. And uh, <laughs> so out of, like, out of all of this cast, uh, who else we got? Uh, Lauren Alania. Uh, country music star sure. Christy Brinkley, sure, obviously. Again, Brinkley, they're getting some. Yeah, they're getting some people that I would. I'm disappointed that they are going that way. Uh, Brinkley, yeah. Why? I don't know. She's at 65. She's a supermodel. Okay. You do know, whatever which, you what want. else is she gonna do? Yeah, no, you're right. That's pretty cool. I guess you know why not? Yeah, sure. It's a it's a good gig. Uh, Mary Wilson from the Supremes. That's okay. a weird one to me. Yeah. How, she's got to be probably 70s, right? Yeah. In her 70s, maybe? Supremes were big in the 60s. Yeah, 70s, early, early to late. Early to late. <laughs> <laughs> she's early to late 70s. Yeah, so, so de but whole, definitely in her 70s, the right? Whole spectrum. Does that cover the whole spectrum? Uh, I believe so. <laughs> I think you're all She's, good there. Uh, early to late seventies. Um, seventy five years old. And uh, they're She's using 75. the term celebrity loose loosely. Yeah, uh, Kel Mitchell's on there from Keenan and Kel. Good for him, man. He kinda, oh yeah. He kind of got fucked in that whole. Sitch. It's supposed to be people like this, right? Yeah. That need some kind of reminder boost, to the public. Some that, boost. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's Vanderbeek's. Uh, thing. He wants he wants to remind people that he's still around, still out there. I guess, man. He did that. You cool, can really easily forget about. He did him. that cool series on Vice where he played Diplo. Um, the problem I, is nobody watched. It was that nobody cool. watches Vice. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I watched it. it. Was pretty. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's funny like that in situations like that where he's like playing seriously like someone. I, I like I, I like that series he did with Kristen Ritter where it was the apartment. What was it? Oh oh yeah the B, the apartment, B in yeah, apartment thirteen B or something yeah. yeah yeah that's it yeah the B in apartment. I wish that something. hadn't been canceled. He was great on that. That was a good show too. Mm -hmm. Really good show. Um, but yeah, I, I, man, I'd, I'd like to see Vanderbeek back out there again. He's back a Wilmingtonian. He lived here for a long time. He is. He's not from here, but he lived here for a long time. For Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. And then he's just like a dad, I think. Is he? Yeah, like full on dad. I like that. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Look, I mean, I'd like to have someone like that in my life, you know? Uh, a dad? <laughs> you know, like how he's like a total dad, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, as opposed to... Just, you know, 
Party boys. Surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by party boys, dude. That is incorrect, no, James. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Where are you going? Where uh, you been? Oh, you were in Florida. Yeah. I'm, no, House I'm, party. Well, I'm going to Orlando, yeah. It was, we're taping this in advance, obviously. But yeah, yes. yeah. So you're going. Yes. House party. Live show. Live show. Yeah. Brewery. House party. Game. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is part of my job, Jesse, and mm-hmm. I am not apologizing <laughs> for that. Um, Vanderbeek so. had a job too, and he kind of fell off, fell off, fell out of the limelight, you know, and just he's on Dancing with the Stars <laughs> now, James. That is a fourteen-hour-a-day thing. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, got to work and pay damn bills. Pay damn bills, Jabes. Uh, speaking of paying the bills, look, you know who pays the bills for this show. Talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, Jabes. Job bless. What? Uh, somebody brought a ghost pillow to the uh, one of the, the signings. Oh my yesterday. gosh, and like laid down on the ground? No. Waiting they didn't in line. Laid down on the ground, that. but they, oh. were, they were like, hey man, I bought this pillow. And they told me a story like, it was uncomfortable neck and it changed the way they slapped and everything. And I was like, holy shit, man. Um, and then we took a, pi- either, we took a picture with it. It was, a, we put the book down on top of the pillow. Did you sign the pillow? No, I didn't sign the pillow. It's too much. It's too expensive. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but it's just going under a, a case. Yeah. But if they get a white sheet, I don't want them to have to see my oh, autograph sure, sure, before sure. they lay their yeah, head down at yeah, night. Yeah. 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 You get a nice sleep. Uh, you can get a nice sleep by going to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, mattresses, sheets, adjustable bases. If you're military or first responder, you get 15% off. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, click it and take it and rip it. Blano, no blano, 36 no months, no interest pay as you go program. No one on the internet is offering that. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros Today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shablankers. Shablankers. Strikeforce Energy is the premier energy drink in the land. Uh, four amazing flavors orange, original, grape, and lemon. Oh, I like that. Thank what? You. Thank you. Yeah, it's a new song I wrote. Orange, original, grape, grape and, and lemon. lemon. Yep, it's off the cuff, uh, definitely wow. re- recording quality. So if you want to pluck that off the internet and then just lay it right into the new. Some, put some kind of track, put some kind DJ of track Khaled. behind it. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I'll give that one to you. Yeah. I'm not going to charge you. I'm not going to charge you for it. Uh, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. No carbs, no sugars. Goes best with liqueur. And now that football season is upon us, uh, that will be in drinks across America, at tailgates across America. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com today and type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. It's good every single time, and they ship everywhere around the entire world. Last but not least, which came for, Jabes. What is it? StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? Ah, there it is. You're welcome. Where's my girl? And you're welcome to groom yourself. Yeah, groom yourself. Make shave yourself. yourself. Look, yeah, get get groomed up before shave the cruise, up, groomed guys. Up. Yeah. I don't want to see any, you know, unoiled, ungroomed. Yep. Unshaven, unshaven, unkempt, uh, smelly hairs. Yeah. Okay. On the cruise, on the Drinking Bros cruise. <laughs> Old smelly hair. Um, James, I have a feeling you're gonna be taking a lot of Dramamine on that. Why? It's you're on a boat, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, don't be shaven on the cruise, James. Is what I'm saying. I have a feeling you're gonna be a little wobbly. A little dizzy. No, I'm kidding. You don't even feel it moving, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but go to straightrazors.com. Shave yourself up. Get yourself a kit. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Uh, football season is here, Javes. Cool. I know. Cool. I know. You're not stoked, are you? Yeah, well, what are we talking about? What? What, do you, what are you talking about? Football season is here. Okay. First live event. First uh, opening game. Um... 
Are you going anywhere to watch the game this weekend? No. You're not going right over to Ashley's or, or anything? Mm-mm. I'm taking her husband down. Yeah. He's coming with us. No? Mm-hmm. No, you're just... Nope. Uh... <laughs> so I have a um, back-to-school thing Friday, and then I have a back-to-school, another back-to-school party Saturday, okay. and then a birthday party Sunday. So, nope. Mm. Nope. Good. Uh, let's talk about what you do love then. Real Housewives. Dennis Quaid. What? Nope. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you, a DQ? You big DQ fan? <laughs> no, I just saw pictures of him with that that young young lady on the boat. What? Is he dating somebody younger? Oh yeah, 26. Ah. 26 year old. Really? Coed. Co- Smoking oh, hot. What's a what's a what's a coed? Uh, she's in grad school or whatever. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Quaid. Quaid. Uh, I'm Just gonna, coked up. Now, here's one that never I'm gonna stopped. I'm going to have to pull smoking. up this bruiser. He's got a cigarette in his hand. Still. Um, still. God, he hard charges, And you know, he's, he? one of, he's one that you told me this, where like he's like, oh, I'm cleaning up, cleaning up my act, right? Yeah. And never stopped doing coke. No, no. Never I, stopped. He just sort of kept it more under control and under wraps. Yeah. Yeah, there's, so Laura uh, doesn't have to go back to class until next week. Ah, uh, good for her. So there is, is that this blonde? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, the butt shot. Mm, didn't see that. They're on a boat. On a boat, huh? And, and they get a Lake nice Cuomo. butt shot in Cuomo. Everybody goes there. Oh yeah. Everybody goes there. Well, because ah, now I'm looking at that so, ass shot. Yeah, yeah, same girl. Okay, good. So Clooney, Clooney went there first because no one none of the paparazzi would would come and bother him, right? Mm-hmm. But then he, unfortunately, made it famous enough. Everybody goes every, there now, yeah. Everyone goes there, but also the paparazzi goes there. So it's like he kind of found this little pocket, right? Yeah. Where he could be George Clooney and there was no pictures of him and he could just like, right? Be himself, yeah. And this he ruined really it. This is really funny. As I'm, usual. I, pu- I pulled it up with the ass shot here. It says Dennis Quaid is taking advantage of the last week before school. Yep. It's back in season. <laughs> uh-huh. Bringing his smoking hot grad student girlfriend on a romantic getaway to Lake Cuomo. Sure. Uh, as we all know, it says age ain't nothing but a number. I hate that phrase more than life. Yeah, I know. But it's he's 60. So, so he's 65 and she's 26. Right. Uh, whew. Man. Yeah. Just still, and he's still doing it. They're coming out of some restaurant. He looks like he's all gacked up, but oh yeah, yeah. He uh, he goes hard. He goes so hard. So what you hard reckon? In the paint. It, so that romantic getaway, he was probably um, over it. What you reckon? Two days in, he's probably exhausted. Exhausted and just <laughs> over it, right? Unless like, he was on that yayo. And that's the only way. Yeah, it's the only way. That white. I love. She has to go back to class. Ah, it's so good. It's so good, daddy. though. The resurgence of the daddy. I know. I mean. That's a 40-year lo- age gap right there. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, his, I think his kids are older than that. Ha, uh-huh. Have to be. Whew. They have to be. Quaid. I mean, my dad is 65, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's mine. Quaid against the machine. Yeah. Man, that is amazing. Daddy, daddy Quaid. Uh, and he looks he looks coked out on this boat, by the way, on this pick. And he always does. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he did uh, some interview. He's playing Reagan or something or played Reagan. Whatever. Didn't see it. Yes. Um, I think he is playing Reagan. Is playing. I b- believe so. He's this played a long Bush. time ago. So he's played Bush before. Has he? Yeah. So he, he did some interview on NBC, which was like a daytime interview. Uh-huh. And you could tell it was really hard for him mm. like a rough you know what i mean something happened the night before something had to happen that morning yeah. to get him to the set you Oof. know what i'm saying Oof. I, don't know how, I don't know how you do it not at that age man like, no do you really want to be i mean it, he has he has kids has an ex wife you know what i mean yeah like, yeah 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 that's, that's, uh, Sounds like a nightmare at that age. It's a hard. Let's see. I'm trying to think of when my friends worked with him. That was like 15 years ago, and I was like, "What's he like?" And they were like, "Man, he fucking goes hard yeah. every single night." Yeah. And I was like, "Shit!" And he was married. Yeah. And th- the wife was 
going hard with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. So, uh, and they were, at, there was this one strip club they were always at. And I was just, I mean, re, that's, I, that's, that's the level I'm talking, going hard. Okay. Yeah. But they said he never missed a day and, you know, on the set and he did his job. He was professional and then that's it. So, who knows, man? Some people can go like that. I saw a picture of John Cougar Mellencamp mm -mm. the other day because he's dating Meg Ryan. Yeah. Um, who's Quaid's ex-wife. Yes. And... Cougar still smoking cigarettes. Fuck. I like how is that guy alive smoking two packs a day like that? I think once you get to a certain point, then who really cares, right? Uh, yeah. They've made it that far. It's like Keith Richards, Keith yeah. Richards, Dennis Quaid. At that point, so you get lung cancer, you know? Yeah. Or you'll get it when you're 80, 85. You're good anyways. Yeah, you're ready it's a to big go deal anyway. at that point, yeah. Um, but Mellencamp, Keith I don't made know it. about him. Keith's going to make it to the end of the tour. They got one more uh, U.S. tour date, and they're done next weekend in, in Miami. Um, tickets are through the roof for that, that show in Miami because they're expecting that to be the last. So uh, wouldn't uh, hold out you'll, hope for I that. Think I think you'll they'll see do him another again. one. I think you'll see him again. Again, I, I told you I won't go with you, but you will see him again. I think I'll, I'll not only see him again, but I think it's going to be this year. That's my prediction. I think they're going to come back and do a couple more dates or something. This year? Yep. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think they're going to come back and do a couple more dates. And you would go to that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I'd love to if it was near me, obviously. Right. Um, just because I enjoy the shit out of them, and I enjoyed that show. But, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm chasing that dragon. You're just like, well, you that need dragon. to be at the last show, dude. I know. You've got to be at the last show, and that's a dangerous game to play. Even the Miami. Especially with the Rolling Stones. The Miami thing hurts, because I'll be in Orlando tomorrow, and you know, a week later, they're in Miami, and I'm like, oh. Keep it going, buddy. You're so close. We're so close. Um, but yeah. Yeah. What were you going to What were you? I was going to say, look, since now that you're not watching the football game. Right. Uh, you're going to flip on over to Real Housewives. Okay. You have a big shock on your hands. What do you, what big do you shock think on you're your gonna, hands. What do you think you're going to tell me that I don't know? Bethany Frankel left the show. Mm -hmm. You knew that. Yes. Oh, that was one of the top stories here today. Um, what I didn't, I didn't delve into why. I just saw um, all the OGs, the big OGs are kind of getting knocked down or they're leaving so like vicky from uh the og og which is uh orange county okay so real real housewives real housewives of orange county were the was the first ones okay because it was like do you remember the oc that show yeah yeah yeah. so then it was a spinoff of that of like the real mm. housewives of orange county and then all these other franchises happened after that but the og from that left as well and bethany is the old you know the, the last York of one. the, uh, yeah. I mean, Compadres. she's a nightmare, so I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things, I think, with her. She's so rich now. Yeah. Her brand, that skinny girl. And I think she just sold it. Bullshit. Possibly. Yeah. Is so, it's made so much money. It's like, why, why have those cameras and deal with that shit on a day-to-day -day basis? No. Hanging out anymore? Um. Yeah, and she's um, at the point where she's just like, she just like cries all the time. Just cries. Mm. I don't know if that's only the only shots that they're Menopause? showing. Just uh, stress level and weird shit and just. Uh, Is she the one that got divorced? Yeah. I'm kidding. They all get divorced mm -hmm. on that show. They, they, are, they do, right? It's the kiss of death. Yeah. Don't ever think you're going to keep, you know, that your marriage is going to last through a couple seasons of Real Housewives. No, not at all. You'll find a new one. Don't not worry. at all. Um, and then your marriage will be on the marriage will be televised on the show and all of that. But the original husband that you come in with will not be there. No, I'll never make it. Never Unless make he's it through super that. Super into it as well. Right. Which a couple of them have been, and they like love it, and it's so creepy. The 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 male version is probably Hard Knocks on HBO. You know. I guess. I mean, there's there's a lot of a drama this year on that show. Yeah, I guess, huh? It's been fantastic. I could watch. It's, so it's the Oakland Raiders this year who are on uh, Hard Knocks. They're the team. I love the they coach. Got cho chosen 
John Gruden is He's my favorite person. The best of his all time. personality yeah. is hilarious. I could watch ninety of those sh- I could watch that all year round. Uh, is he good or does he just seem like he's good? Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody who's been around him is just like Like he says a lot of great things, but as far as he's really an awesome getting guy. the team to where it needs to be, is he good at that? He is. Okay. The problem is this. Some of the personnel uh, and their decisions on players has been shitty. Mm-hmm. Um, they let go the best defensive player in the league last year. They traded him um, like a week before the season. And the guy had a the monster season, Khalil Mack, had a monster season. And they're trying to pull it together. It's, it's hard with them because they're moving to Las Vegas next year. So it's the last year in Oakland. Do they care enough? Like Because that, that, that's, that's the issue as well of trying to put a product on the field that can win. If they can't win immediately, I think they tank the rest of the season, try to get a good draft pick, and then start over fresh in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see it as a coaching issue. I see it as a, a more of a, a personnel issue. So with them, yeah. I mean, that fucking wide receiver, Antonio Brown, with the frostbitten he's the feet. Most, and, he's the most drama, which I love. That guy, man. Now he can't wear a helmet. He's, he's suing the league for not being able to wear the special helmet he's worn for 10 years and uh, all of but it. But he's that good, right? He's the, he's the best in the biz right now. So I'm curious to find out what happens when the actual season starts and he starts playing, if he starts torching it. I know a lot of people are getting ready, gearing up for fantasy football drafts. We are next week for all of our leagues and drinking bros, and it's tough to draft him, man, because I don't know what's going on with that guy. Yeah. He is the but best, but all this other good. bullshit. So like, like, I know. But you have to play in order to... To do something, so... We'll see, but that's been the funnest season. And then uh, they brought in Frank Caliendo on this last show, the comedian from Mad TV who does a million impressions. And uh, he does the best John Gruden impression. So he did it for the team in front of John Gruden. And, and I guess they're friends in real life. They knew each other. Okay. Yeah. And so at the end of the show, they did a bunch of outtakes of like what he was, all the impressions he was doing. Frank Caliendo is fucking great, man. He's hilarious. Yeah. His as far impressions as like sports are sports impressions as well, specifically. Yeah, he's the best, right? I, I yeah, because I, I don't know. It's him, maybe Ari Spears. Uh, he does some impressions sports wise, but like, man, Frank Caliendo is one of the best in the biz at that. I wonder if he enjoys it because people yeah. who do impressions usually hate it because mm, then everybody's asking them to do the the impressions all the time. So. I wonder if he's one of those who's just like, I hate it, or if he's accepted it and is like, yeah, it's fucking great, and everybody right. wants to hear me do it. Uh, but anyways, he came on the show this week and just torched it. I love it. Yeah, and they let off with him on the show. Like, the whole thing's great. Nice. And then don't even get me started on my boy um, who does the voiceovers. Oh, uh, what's his name? Yeah, you know his, you know, you know him as Ray Donovan, probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, his real name is Coldy, Liev Coldy, Schreiber. Coldy, Coldy Ber- Berez. Yes, uh, Liev Schreiber. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. He's great. So he's, he's still there uh, doing the voice of it. And uh, man, that guy's smooth. Smooth voice on him. I wouldn't have expected it because when he... No. Talks in the show on like Ray Donovan, because he's a great actor. But when he talks on the show, it's it's a different voice, and you're like, yeah, Man. And it, it, in interviews and stuff, he's very he's actually dry, funny. He's really oh yeah, funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't sound the same. Like when you hear the voice, you can't see his face. Mm-mm. It's Not literally just like a voice on its own. So when it starts up and it cranks up, and you're like, oh man, yeah, I'm in it. Here we go. Who would have known that guy? That, that would have been the voice of it. You know? Yeah. So strange how that works. Because then you become part of it, and now you can't live without it. Oh, if they did uh, that show without him, I don't know if I'd... It, it, I feel very strange. It almost went down. And he does like the boxing stuff. He does yeah. all their things, right? Yeah, he does all of it. It really gets me into it. I can't hear anyone else doing it. No, and... Uh, there was a standoff where, because when he signed up for Ray Donovan, it was on Showtime, 
and HBO was pissed and he was like, what? Mm. You guys didn't give me a fucking show. So what are we going to do here? Yeah. And then the people were like, dude, we can't do this show without you. So it was one of those rare contracts that HBO allowed him, him to do to both. Do. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's not really conflicting with anything, but yeah. That's what I think. It's a voiceover. It gives on. a shit. Come you know? on. Have you heard this Paz de la Huerta stuff? Oof. Go ahead. I, you know my story. Go ahead. What? Your story? With her in a movie? No. She was, uh, there was a series of horror films that were pitched. It was to do five of them. And mm-hmm. uh, she was one of the leads in one of these things. And I was just like, dude, you can't. She'll never make it. Because of her. Is this a bad story? Well, it's just interesting. So she's she's already accused Harvey Weinstein of rape, right? She's the big one. So she's, she, the, she's big the big one. She's, she's the one that's going to be. So she claims she has other explosive facts and she's willing to keep it out of court for $2 million. That is not surprising to me. No. And if you guys pull this up, they have her walking in to court. Uh, she's sober. No, and she's gotten like a lot of weird work done mm-hmm. and she looks crazy. Yeah. And um, it, this is your big fish against him. Man. It's just done. You have to be credible. I, Unfortunately, yeah. and it sucks because she probably was raped, right? She was probably yeah, drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was probably drunk. That has nothing. You should never, you know, that doesn't mean that you should be raped, but... All of these things probably happened to her, and because of how she is and how she presents herself, mm-hmm. it w- it will do nothing because she is not credible. You know. Yeah. And so, and now asking for this out outside of court, and that's just that's the last straw, really. And is Harvey Weinstein not? Is he gonna get off? I look. I, I've said this for a while. I believed he was. Nothing's gonna happen. Yes, I, a, a lot of these. This is your big fish, you fucking idiots. A lot of these uh, people have dropped out. Um, I think they had when it was going like six of them, right? Mm-hmm. And one of them had the emails where she was, uh, you know, and they slowly days after drop, which is horrible because bad things did happen to them. But slowly, Harvey. Weinstein it is, but wh- one people- of these women sent him an email two days after she was allegedly raped and said, "I love you and I want to come to this fucking party with you." And it's like, right, that's not going to hold up, right, uh, in court. Uh, right. This Paz de la Huerta was, man. I, I look. I've said this before. I, I didn't think she she would hold up because. Every night she's out, she's trash. She was and supposed now, to do you this. Guys, going into court again. Look at this video. Yeah, I mean, she is. It's bad. If you're out, fine. If you you drink on the side, whatever. But when you're going to court or talking to reporters, like you have to be sober, she man. She can barely stand she up. She can in this barely footage. stand. She can barely. She's yeah. Alec, she did will you put something this? Will you with put her, this footage in there? Yeah. Um, of her walking into court. Uh, she did something with her face and, you know, that's fine. But she's housed all the time. Yeah. And so when and she, so, w- there was a horror movie that she was pitched for for us and she was supposed to be the lead of it. And uh, I just I straight up just told the financer, I said, look, man, uh, she was coming off a of Boardwalk Empire and right. uh, she was nominated, I believe, for a Golden Globe or an Emmy. And like, you know, she was on that for a bunch of seasons and every time you saw her out, man, she was just housed. Mm. And so after that, like I was really surprised she was pitched for this small horror film and they were like, man, she just needs work and she needs money and everything else. And then that doesn't mean she'll show up. She did not show up for the meeting. Mm. So yeah, I, I I turned to the finance and I was like, look, man, as much as you want this to happen, I, I don't think, like this will torpedo a film if you have somebody who's not sober and uh, won't show up like this. Yeah. Um, and so when she was the one that was pitched, like or not pitched, but I was kind of the lead witness in this case. You're the like, first yeah. thing I said was, "I he'll get off. I think he'll get off." And everyone was saying, "Well, she was, you know, she." They were saying everyone was saying the same thing, but uh, the same token, like, do we believe all those things happened to her? Yes. And so yeah. she can pull her shit together 
then she can take him down. And she couldn't do it. So this, I'm, I just pulled it up. It says, according to a demand letter attained, obtained by uh, TMZ, the actress wants at least $2 million. Um, or she'll file a new lawsuit against him. Because mm-hmm. she's already she sued him. She nothing new. She's already sued him she, for two yeah. other incidents in 2010, right? She needs money, yeah. So, oof. I don't see how this helps her case. What what it what doesn't. lawyer wanted to do this? And uh, man, uh, I, I again, I don't. Unless there's some other witness that I don't know about, I don't know how he gets doesn't get off of this. Yeah, it's just disturbing video. Yeah, I mean, she can barely barely walk into court. What the hell is going on? I have no idea. Um, I don't know, man. Could there's be a there's a mental yeah there's a mental thing going on there and again unfortunately that will make you not a credible uh witness but uh you know i don't know sorry i'm looking at this uh roller coaster in germany yeah (laughs) have you seen it yeah i I like when you get sidetracked uh it's almost a fun little game in your own mind yeah the roller coaster in germany is crazy that new one yeah yeah Eight? Explain it. Okay, so it's basically a twisting. It's called Eagle's Flight. Yeah. And let me explain to you what it is. So it's um it's basically eight eagle shaped cars, and each connecting at a right angle to a center axis. Kind of like just a swast- swastika. It's exactly just what it looks two like. Two spinning swastikas. It's exactly what it looks German- like when I saw it amusement park yeah so sorry that's all i have on that one but it just (laughs) is hilarious and the owner of the park is like i'm sorry i just didn't realize i didn't notice yeah did you not (laughs) but you know i do think things get past people right can i get get, uh one for the swastika ride please yeah um for can we pop pop on down there two Giant rotating swastikas. Anyways. Yeah. Carry on. Welcome to Germany. You're welcome. Do we have a crime corner today? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Yes. We do? Yes. Yeah. Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. <laughs> um, let me thank my detectives first. This this is a po- this is a popular one. Okay. Had a lot of detectives working on it. Mm. If I don't mention your name, I'm sorry. Um, it's it's not my usual, but when a lot of people are wanting it, I've got to do it, right? Of course. So John Patton, thank you. George Abbott, thank you so much for your work, detective. Good work. Dave the Crazed, that's what he likes to be called. Yeah. Ronald Storm and Austin Bowen. Mm. Okay. Guys, really great work. Okay, I'm going to take it to the captain, me, and you may be promoted. Anyway, <laughs> um, so Florida man. Ah, uh, was not expecting that. No, you weren't. You didn't think it would be, huh? No. That's where you're about to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Florida. Florida, what up? You're going to see a lot of crime. According to these things, everything just, there's just crime everywhere, huh? Mm-hmm. So Florida man arrested after in-home castration goes wrong. Ah. Eesh. So uh, the man told the deputy he just performed a a castration on a man um, and encountered major issues. And the, the deputies found the victim in the bed bleeding heavily. So listen. So they find each other on this fetish site. The guy is 74. Um, Gary Van Riswick? Yeah. Sure. Of Sebring, Florida? Oh, big fan of Sebring. So they found each other on this fetish site uh, of, of people that like, that were into castration. Ooh. Which I don't, I don't understand. What is, is it's it an app? It's just a one-time thing. Is it an app? Or can you sew f- back on and go back again? Fetish site? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, what's the, f- what's the fetish? It's the castration, it's the part. actual castration. But then, yeah. But then it's over after one try, usually. Right. Unless you know, 
you're pretty good with uh, nailing stuff into it, stuff like that. I get you can kind of like do that a couple times. Nailing stuff into your dung. Yeah, or balls or whatever it may be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that Taint, something? But vagina. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Things like that. You want to see a <laughs> nail go through there? <laughs> no, I don't. But I'm just saying, like, there are certain any any fetish you can think of, there is a site for it. With a hammer. Yeah. Okay. Nail into like wood and stuff like that. Ah, so yeah. just putting a scrotum up on the desk. Yeah, and then just kind of like like squirrel squirrel skinning it you know uh, what I mean? bat wing yeah they call it yeah, a bat yeah, wing yeah, and yeah. then nailing it right through there uh-huh, yeah uh-huh. flying squirreling it yeah so um that's pretty much it so anyways the <laughs> man the deputies came so the guy the guy that was doing the castration called okay nine one one hung up and basically when they came he said he he uh, was performing a castration and it didn't go well. So it was two dudes. There's a guy, the guy that was arrested mm-hmm. was performing the castration. On another dude. On another dude. Ah, so it was a gay they thing. They found each, look, look, that's what I'm saying. I have so many questions. Right, right. The fetish site, like what is it? What's the end game here in life? Yeah. Because then that's a one-time deal for everyone, Right. That's the ultimate. If you're a haberdasher and you're able to sew things back on quickly. Back on, I guess. Um, So anyways, he was using painkillers that he purchased online from England. I need to get that site from him. Yep. Um, And he was using forceps and scalpels and had like a whole makeshift surgical room. And he said he had done it on someone else. Hmm. And that one didn't go well either. But... They can't find that guy. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. this is like something that he does and he films it. Anyway, like I said, this isn't my normal, but enough, like so many people <laughs> sent me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I guess this is the kind of stuff that you guys want to hear. Well, we'll start with the age. Um, the guy was 74, 74 years old, so maybe he was tired of his own dick. It wasn't him, though. Oh, he was the one performing He's it. the one performing on Oof. a 53-year-old. That's shaky hands, man. I don't want a 74-year-old castrating me. If that's what I'm into sexually, I don't want shaky hands around my ding-dong, right? Uh, so he's performing it on a 53-year-old 53-year-old dude? 53-year-old dude, yeah. Big age gap. So clearly sure. he was into daddies. Right. Um, guy, was the guy a doctor? Or no. any license? Mm-mm, mm-mm, no. Mm-mm. So he's just an amateur. Hey, uh, among his... Um, among his charges is uh, performing, uh, practicing medicine without a license. Mm. So they really, they got him on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just overall being fucking creepy. Man, and I don't like to fetish shame. shame. Of course, of, of course. course. Yeah, you, you've never done it. Kink, we're not going to kink shame here. Nah, no, no kink shaming on this show, obviously. But... Gosh, that one is tough not to shame. That, you know what I that mean? That really is. So what do they end because up I don't get it. doing with the dick? Were they able to sew the dick back on? They didn't say any of that. Uh, do we have the, the, the 53-year-old man's name? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Well, look, if, he's, if you're out there and you're watching, which I'm sure you are. Sure. Uh, we've a uh, big demo in Florida. Big fetish demo. Uh, we wish you the best, and I hope you mm-hmm. get your, your ding dong sewed back on. But I hope I hope that ding dong lives to see another day because obviously, if you're going in getting castrated, right? That's something you're into something you're once into. isn't going to be enough. You're gonna want to do that need again. To yeah. Do it again. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna need a strong Betsy Ross though. <sighs> Real sewer in the family to get that ding dong back on. Right, and then I'm gonna need that that um website yeah or the app no i'm gonna need the website for where he purchased the online the pills online oh sure 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 yeah Yeah. sure the painkillers yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely um man so that is if that doesn't make you feel good inside nice and warm and fuzzy (laughs) then i don't know what else i could do for you i think we're starting people's mondays off right (laughs) Uh, the way that the way that it With should just be. Just an at-home castration. Of yeah. Two dudes finding each other on the internet, and people. Some people say, you know, like. What do you start with? Do you go scissors? Or do you do you go knife with that? You go forceps and scalpel. Uh, so you just hold it up and then just start to. Ah, you know boy, what I and mean, that's right and that's what the they shaft. said. 
no, I'm just showing you how if I were to do it. And again, me and me and the guy are at the same level of medical training, I'm sure. Sure. Subscribe on YouTube if you want to see Jade's <laughs> uh, see hold up with the, the forceps yep. and then just scalpel starting yeah, at, at the, the shaft. shaft yeah. yeah. Oh, or boy. wait. Yeah. Yeah. Who get how, how who gets off in that situation? Again, I have so many questions. Most weird fetishes I can be like, okay. I yeah. understand who's getting what out of what, whatever, and why, yeah. what and why risk versus reward, all of that stuff. This one, I just cannot, I cannot yeah, wrap I, I, my I would head imagine like, it. let's say you're the guy getting his, his dong lopped off, right? Mm -hmm. Or balls. The last one that he did was uh, one testicle. The guy was getting cut off. Ooh, very Lance Armstrong. Yep. So, and that was like his thing, right? I guess. Yeah. He's into uniballers. Yeah. And um, even that I can be like, okay. I wonder if they played uh, J that Jay Z song "Ball So Hard." You know, the seventy-four-year-old "Ball So Hard." Probably that shit's faded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that shit cray "Ball So Hard," and then it was just <laughs> yeah. that one ball. Mm -hmm. Just a guess on that one. Yeah. I have no did idea. you have another question though? I did. Okay. <laughs> um, who gets off in that situation? Mm -hmm. Like the guy who's getting his, his dick lopped off, right? Yep. Is he hard? And then that, then the knife goes through it. Look, they didn't. I don't know. No, no. I'm just asking oh, aloud oh. now at this point. Oh, like, I don't. Again, I do not have any of these answers for or you. Or is the is the 53 year old dude jacking off the 74 year old man who's lopping off his While dong? He's doing it. Um, and again, that's a one time so thing. Really, you gotta. Everyone's gotta, you know, get off that one time because it's not gonna happen. No. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, the guy's done it twice. He and has. then does he save it? Does he save it for his own he collection? He has video. He has video, but mm -hmm. does he save the actual parts? Um, there was a jar, I think. Did he keep that tater? Or did he uh, you know, give it back to the guy so he can maybe stuff it back in his sack? Uh, How does that work out? Yeah, you know? gosh. Is there an agreement beforehand? Like mm -hmm. before you show up of like, hey, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you t uh, take a tater out of the sack, but I'm going to need you to go ahead and uh, put... Put it back in and zip it back up before Jeff we uh, just get it. out of here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. You think so? Yes. Ah, all right. Well, it makes a little more sense. You also got to be near a hospital, I would, I would imagine, right? Yeah, or this guy. Yeah, this guy just has a lot of confidence that he's going to be able to perform the surgery mm -hmm, correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. A lot of ice, too, I bet. Yeah. Lots of ice. A lot goes into getting on. Like, as I look at it as an all the way around thing, right? A lot, lot goes into getting off like that. Mm -hmm. if, if you have to get a scalpel, obviously make sure it's clean, all that other stuff, towels, ice, everything else, just to get off one time, mm -hmm. it's too much work. Yeah. That's way too much work for me. But all that's part of it. Do you know what I mean? I, maybe. You're like building up to it with all of that. Yeah, that's the foreplay mm -hmm. element of it. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, maybe that's where the wheelchair porn thing comes into play, too. Because I, I never understood that, you know, where you see uh, people in wheelchairs running over people's boners. Yep. That's uh, uh -huh. that's where I'm like, man. All right, cool. I, but because you're gonna I, survive that. Where do you see this? Pinterest. You're gonna yeah. You're gonna survive that. Uh, no, I, I think it's um, <clears throat> uh, abc.com. Yeah. So. So. You just want to go on ABC. You, again, you can look up, pull up that new Dancing with the Stars lineup, and then right again, underneath that, you scroll to the bottom of the page for that wheelchair porn. Again, I can get, I can get a lot of different fetishes. That right? was the Russell Brand thing. You know that, right? Yeah, the wheelchairs. So. Yeah. Wheelchair porn. That was, uh, that was what drove him and Katy Perry apart, allegedly. You know? Yeah. When that's your last resort, mm -hmm. what I think is, because at the time when I heard that, I was like, man, eh, it's last resort. What you just read to me right there. That would be the actual last resort. Yes. Mm -hmm. You just stepped it up. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like putting, putting nails in it, driving over it, kicking it, mm -hmm. putting a, a heel in there. Fine. Mm -hmm. You'll recover. Yeah. At some point. But gosh, the, ex the extremeness yeah. of that <laughs> final frontier. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Man, it's crazy that there's people like that out in the world. It is. I was really hoping to not talk about this one for this long, but 
Ah, uh, you, you know really, me. You know really me. Really had so many questions. <laughs> when we do a crime corner, I like to examine it, yeah. uh, just like any other detective would. Sure, sure. I, I like to to put my gum shoe on mm-hmm. and uh, throw my two cents around and put a little weight into it. Sure. Because I want the audience to know that I've thought about it. I'm here for you, and uh, if you do have one of these fetishes, congratulations. Uh, you're not alone. I'm trying to figure it out and help right. you. You know, Dan, where are you going? Uh, Dan Holloway. This is Dan, the first time that we've grossed out our other done. our other co-host that to to the, ooh, the point ooh, where he has to, to leave. Ooh, fancy. When someone gets their penis cut off uh, and then they walk out of the studio after that, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of amazing to me. Kind of amazing to me. <laughs> So let's give the revolutionary figure of the day to Russell Brand. Um, For really bringing all of that to the forefront. I didn't know wheelchair porn porn was a thing at all until that rumor happened. Again, can't confirm it. Sure. Not going to deny it because I don't know that either. Right. But I thought when I heard that, I was like, that's the end of it sexually in your life where there's no place else to go where you've gone to the end of the porn internet yes right and i've been proven wrong today yeah i've been absolutely proven wrong i i've shown you the end it's not pretty (laughs) it's not pretty how many people sent that in oh creepy i mean i'm probably missing some but i mean five five people right here oof and to send in the same, like a lot of them are different random stories. But for when people send me at least the same story at least five or six times, I got to do it, guys. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. People you have do spoken. It. You know? nah, the people have spoken. You give them what they the want. The detectives have told me what they want to work on. And they said, Captain, <laughs> come on, take the, you know. Got to have that castration. Take one. the tra- training wheels off. <laughs> Let me go after this one, Cap, you know. Yeah. And I say, no, it's too dangerous. And then and then they you say something say else. Something else yeah. And then you say. And then I go, fine, at your own risk, yeah. boys. I'm on the case. It'll be your badge. <laughs> if you don't, right? A lot of that. A lot, a lot of that. A lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> proud of you, Javes. And also, I'm, I'm proud of myself. Uh, football season is back. New book is out. Uh, this is the last day to help make it to the New York Times bestseller list. Please buy a copy of Thank You for My Service in hardback. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.